Welcome to part one of the Getting Started with vRealize Operations mini-series. In this episode, we're going to walk through vRealize Operations group creation. We create groups to monitor certain sets of objects. We can then apply different policies to these. If you're already familiar with group creation, then please head to part two. For our part one example, we're going to create a group of virtual machines that we can then apply a specific vRealize operations and monitoring policy to. I've chosen this example group to be a set of Core Horizon servers which are based in Wellington. vRealize operations, also known as vROPS, talks directly to vCenter to extract information about the VMware environment. Therefore, having a structured and well laid out vCenter environment makes it easier when getting started with vROPS. The best way of achieving this is either through a well laid out and logical vCenter folder structure, or alternatively, we can use vSphere to tag objects. If we decide to group VMs together using tags, then the first thing we'll need to do is set up a new category of which the vSphere tag will belong to. To do this, we'll create a new category and call it Horizon servers. To keep it simple, we'll copy the category name into the description. To ensure we can select the correct associated object type, we'll select virtual machine. With the category created, we now want to create a new tag that we'll assign to Horizon servers. So let's create the new tag. In our example, the servers are based in Wellington, so we'll name this tag Wellington Horizon Servers. Once again, we'll copy the name into the description. In the Categories drop-down, we'll select Horizon Servers that we've just created. That is how we create tags within vSphere. Now let's assign those tags to the group of virtual machines that we're wanting to monitor in vROPS. Before we assign the tag, we'll first create a new parent folder upon which the VMs will reside. This will show you an alternative method upon which you can group virtual machines together. To save time, I've already created the parent folder and named it the same as our vSphere tag. We can now tag the child virtual machines. With our objects tagged, let's jump across into vROPS. You are now looking at the home tab of vROPS 6.4. The first thing we want to do is take advantage of the vSphere tags and folder structure that we just set up within vCenter to create our group. Before we do this, we'll firstly create a new group type which is a little more descriptive than the ones that come standard. We can do this by navigating to the content tab. We're going to name this group type Horizon servers. Now we'll create the physical group itself. To do this, go to the environment tab and click on custom groups. Let's create a new group and we'll call this Wellington Horizon servers. I'll select the group type we just made, Horizon servers, and I'll put a tick in, keep group membership up to date. This will ensure that new objects that are tagged or placed in the parent folder in vCenter are monitored automatically. We'll come back to the policy shortly. Now we need to define the membership criteria. We've basically done this already when we created the tags and folders within vCenter. So let's utilize those. To do this, I'll select virtual machine from the object type drop-down box. It's worth noting that this group will only contain virtual machines. I'll now configure my criteria for this particular group. To do this, select Properties. This is where I can select the property to be either the vSphere folder that we created called Wellington Horizon Servers, or alternatively, I can select the vSphere tag that we assigned in vCenter, also labelled Wellington Horizon Servers. To ensure that I have all the VMs that I want to be grouped together, I can select Preview. As you can see, all three VMs are shown. Now back to policy selection. In our part one example, we'll select the vSphere default policy. This out-of-the-box policy applies a generic set of base settings to all vROPS objects. 
I have now created a custom group within BRealize operation that I can apply policies to. In part two of this mini-series, I'll take you through basic policy creation so that you can ensure that the information being reported by vRealize operations is accurate and concise. The link to part two will be posted below in the description.